hello. So you're ready to file your FAFSA. The good thing is that there's no big mystery involved in how to do it. This following talk is about demystifying the FAFSA. The first thing to know is, what is the FAFSA? The FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. It is filed each year and becomes available on October 1st of every year. The FAFSA is a snapshot of your financial and family situation as of the day you file it. It is then used by schools to determine the financial aid package that will be available to you. So why should you file a FAFSA? Well, as I said, it is used to determine your eligibility for financial aid at the school or schools you send it to. This applies to sources of aid such as federal grants and or state grants, both forms of free money. It is also used to determine your eligibility for federal loans, which are low interest rate monies which you have to pay back. Additionally, it is used to determine your eligibility for work study or school jobs if they're available at your school. The next question is, who might be eligible to receive aid by completing a FAFSA? For one, you must either be a U.S. citizen or an eligible non-citizen. Also, you must have a valid social security number, with some exceptions. Lastly, if you are a male, you must be registered with Selective Service or have a qualifying exemption. So now that you know why you should complete a FAFSA and whether or not you are eligible to receive aid by completing one, you might be asking yourself, how can I apply? There are a couple of ways to do so. You can either go to FAFSA on the web at www.studentaid.gov or you can download the mobile app, My Student Aid. Then you will need to create an FSA ID to log in. Please refer to our video, Creating Your FSA ID, for instructions on how to do so. Next, you will need to determine whose information needs to go onto your FAFSA. To do so, you must determine your dependency status to see whether or not you will need parental information as well as your own. There are a series of dependency questions on the FAFSA. If you answer yes to any of them, you will not need to provide parental information. For greater detail about this section of the FAFSA, please refer to our video, How to Determine Your Dependency Status. This is the screen on the FAFSA where you are asked these questions. Next, you need to gather together the things that you will need in order to fill out the FAFSA. You will need your and your spouse's, if you are married, 2019 federal income taxes and W-2s. If it is determined that you are a dependent student for purposes of financial aid, you will also need your parents' 2019 federal income taxes and W-2s. In addition, you will also need any other income and asset information pertaining to the people on your FAFSA. This includes the value of cash, savings, and checking accounts, as well as investments. This does not include the value of the home you live in, however, but would include any investment property. Then, once you log in, you will need to fill out all of your student demographic information, such as address, telephone number, and email address. If applicable, you will also need to fill in parent demographic information. A very convenient part of the application is that the FAFSA allows you to link to the IRS using the data retrieval tool in order to import your tax information directly into your FAFSA. Everything you enter must match exactly as it appears on your tax return, so it doesn't always work. But when it does, it's such a time saver and it greatly helps with accuracy, so I strongly encourage you to try to do so. Once you've finished entering all of your information, you're ready to sign and submit your FAFSA. If your parent is also on your FAFSA, they will need to sign with their own FSA ID as well. So, now that you've filed your FAFSA, what happens next? Within three business days, your FAFSA will process and a student aid report or SAR will be sent to you and an institutional student information record or ICER will be sent to whichever school or schools you indicated on your FAFSA. These will display what is called an EFC or Expected Family Contribution which schools use to determine your financial aid award depending upon the program you are enrolled in. Therefore, although the same EFC will be reported to each school you send your FAFSA to, your actual financial aid package will likely be different school by school. Here are some things to keep in mind about the FAFSA. Sometimes, people think that they may have made too much money so they won't qualify for any aid and therefore don't need to file a FAFSA. However, remember that some financial aid comes in the form of loans, which you may qualify for regardless of your income. On the other hand, some people think that because they may not have worked, they therefore cannot file a FAFSA. That is not correct either. You can file a FAFSA with no income and only report your assets, or even all zeros if there were no assets either. 
Another misconception is that some people think that because they work under the table, they don't have to report that income on the FAFSA. On the contrary, all earned income has to be reported on the FAFSA and your school may ask you for more information about it if needed. One final misconception that I'll mention is that people may think that although they were married as of the day they filed the FAFSA, but because they weren't married back in the 2019 tax year, which the FAFSA is looking at, they don't need to report their spouse's income. No, in fact, the income from both parties must be included on the FAFSA. Okay, that covers the bulk of what you need to know about filing your FAFSA. Now, let me strongly encourage you to apply as early as possible because some schools have filing deadlines. Also, some monies, like grants, may be awarded on a first-come, first-served basis, so you will want to get your FAFSA into the school right away in order to be considered for them. Lastly, filing your FAFSA early will give you the time that you might need to finalize any outstanding processing requirements. For example, your FAFSA could be randomly selected for the process called verification, which might require you to submit documentation to the school. You will want to make sure that you're able to complete all necessary steps in time for your school to award your aid. A final best practice that I would recommend is that you set aside a specific time and space with minimal distractions in order for you to complete your FAFSA in as an efficient and accurate manner as possible. If you are interested in sending your FAFSA to one of our schools, you should enter the appropriate school code on your FAFSA. They are listed here for your convenience. Finally, if you are trying to complete your FAFSA on your own and you find that you need further assistance, please feel free to sign up for one of our FAFSA Friday help sessions. These are one hour individual appointments with one of our educational funding staff members who can help you and your parent, if applicable, to complete your FAFSA. You can find the calendar of available time slots on either one of our two websites. That's it. I hope this was helpful for you and that you're able to file your FAFSA as soon as possible. Thank you and good luck on your financial aid journey.